Hello everybody and welcome back. I am KRX and we are continuing on with our complete beginner guide to Europa Drifter Solace 4. We're playing as France. The year is 1473 right now. This is a no DLC run. This is base game. You just pick the game up on sale on Steam for 8 to 10 bucks and, and you're just jumping in. You're trying to figure things out and see if you're going to enjoy the game enough to maybe invest in some of the DLCs or not. And essentially we're winning a war right now against England. Pretty decisively. We have not had a land battle yet. We're sieging out Northumbria. Once this fort falls, we'll be able to sort of uh, gloss over their entire country. We've wiped out their navy. And we've sieged all of their allies, Brittany, and also their Irish allies as well. In fact, with Brittany, I think what we might do with Brittany is Brittany is we're going to force them to annul their alliance. We're going to force Brittany to annul their alliance with England and just get them out of the war quick. Actually, you know what? Maybe we just white peace Brittany and we take, we, we force England to annul their alliance with Brittany. I want Brittany's truce to be as short as possible. Yeah, Brittany, go, go do your own thing. Have fun. Just white peace Brittany. Just getting them out of the war. Just getting a nice five-year short, five-year truce on them. And we will swing back in to attack them in five years. And this time it will be without England's help. We're going to make sure of that. You know, we could get another general and hope for a siege general. Let's roll another general. That does cost military power. Not a siege general, but a good general. The supply limit here is dubious, to say the least. This is a hill's fort. We could just go for London. You know, what the heck, let's just go for London. Oh, we're already fully sieging them there. Leave one light ship behind, uh, actually here, just detach, blockade, bring these guys around. Make sure we're blockading and simultaneously scouting out um, as much of the coastline as possible. We're going for London. Now the thing is, England's going to have to go for Northumbria. We could actually go back and intercept them and fight them in Northumbria if we wanted to. We almost have them fully sieged. Uh, we have them completely blockaded now. Do we march up here and engage them in Northumbria? We would be the defenders because we own the fort right now. Actually, you know, we don't have much of a garrison here. I think we do have to do that. Let's leave 10,000 behind. Yeah, let's go. Let's fight. No, our leader has died. Our leader has finally died. Louis XI has taken over the throne. We are no longer excommunicated. That's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. That's going to be a huge positive modifier enhancement there. Oh, 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 they're shifting over. They know we're coming for them. Well, hmm. Dorcas Farmlands? Hmm, interesting. This is woods. I'd rather not fight them in the woods. Are they going to go back to Northumbria? What are they going to do here? Or are they just going to sit there? Does the Pope still hate us? I'm sure they do. We upset the Pope, like, multiple times. Yeah, they might just excommunicate us again. I don't know. We'll have to see. But for the most part, everybody should be loving us a lot more now that we're not excommunicated. Yeah, every, look at this hearts. Hearts all around. Everybody loves us. Sort of. Kind of. Not really, but... Scotland likes us a lot more. Liege. I think we need to butter Liege a bit. I think this is going to allow us to take more, more land in this war, actually, without that being too upset. 
Knowledge is power. Uh, we don't need the prestige. We'll get more prestige. We do need to make sure that we're of positive stability, though. You know what the heck? I'm going to hit this twice. I'm just going to hit that twice so we go plus one. Do we have troops that we can allocate to working on the siege here? We need 6,000 troops for that. If we peeled 6,000 off of this, we would still have... Uh, we'd still have the advantage here. We might as well be sieging both of their forts at the same time so we don't have to delay. We don't have any siege generals, though, is the unfortunate thing. Okay, we're not fully blocking... Hold on. We're not fully blockading um, London anymore, so we're not getting that benefit. They were successfully sieging London and uh, this hill fort at the same time. Our subjects are just chilling because they know they don't have anything to do. Castile could be coming up to help us, but they seem to be just, I don't know. They, we might see Castile land troops on England when it's basically when the war is all said and done. Gain one stability for free. Holy cow, that's really good. So now we're at plus two. We would have, that's really, really good. Plus two stability. Three is the maximum for that. And good events and things can specifically happen to you at, at plus three stability. Unfortunately, the AI is just kind of being dumb here, to be honest. They kind of need to make a move. But they're they're smart enough to recognize that if they move to Northumbria, they're done so. If they move to York, they'll probably lose that battle. And they can't move into here because this is a woods province. And they know that their best hope is that we attack them, but we're not going to attack them. Uh, we do have a new idea. Oh, 20% siege ability. That's going to make sieging a lot faster. It's going to make us siege faster and progress faster on the sieging. We're very close away from Milan. Our military quality right now is actually off the charts, I'm sure. So it'd be funny to actually fight them and see what happens. Our leaders are much stronger too. We have more cavalry up here as well. Yep, Castile is Castile is invade. Uh, you know, do, Castile is launching their attack up Cornwall. Here comes Castile. Aragon's even here helping out. I wonder if Castile will lead the attack against the English army or not. I don't think they can actually walk through. Well, no, they can walk. They can slither through here. The forts do create a zone of control, but there's a little bit of a pathway through here. It's very sneaky. 14% on London. Once London falls and once this falls, the, I mean, the war is over. The war will be over. So we don't even have to engage their army, which is kind of interesting. Whoops. Don't quite have enough troops here. Taking a little bit of attrition there, and we're not reinforcing them fast enough. Castile doing big, big brain carpet siege right here. Good for them. Although this would be a nice province for them to siege, because then it would dispatch the rest of the English navy. Whoops, I forgot about that. Oh, London's been taken. Where are our transports? One light ship needs to go here. These 10,000 need to swoop into here. These guys need to meet them in Somerset. We need to pick up those 9,000 move them over to here. It looks like the rebels are going to make a little bit of progress. It's not a big deal if they succeed in just taking some land. They gain some extra separatism. So it is the separatism does create the unrest, so it is a bummer. 
that that's a thing, but 99% England, that's, that's, that's essentially a 100%. They have unconditionally sur surrendered at this point. 99% might as well be 100%. England is ready to bow out of this war. That is a clean war. We never even fought their land army, um, which we would have defeated them in that sense anyways. Scotland loves us. Liege likes us. That was clean. That was clean. Let's end the war with England before we take it. Well, it doesn't even matter. 9,000 dudes will be enough. So what do we actually want from England? And, and hypothetically, if we took the stuff that we had cored, how upset would everyone be? Geneva? A bunch of nations we have a truce with? Irish nations that don't really matter? Switzerland, actually. So Switzerland and Geneva are nations that would be a little upset. We can butter them up real quick. No rush. Right when I thought we were going to get out of here unscathed, we're fighting a big battle in the woods as the aggressor against England. Castile is going to reinforce this, but they're going to get there too late. Why, oh why, oh why are we fighting this battle? We're losing it. Now we're going to win it, but... Oh man, that is not what I was hoping for at all. We're going to chase? We're going to give chase here on their army. Because we just stacked wiped their entire army. 30,000 Englishmen that didn't need to die or be captured. Why, England, did you do that? They, they, they literally felt that sense of desperation. Just going to do a little bit of a carpet siege here. We've lost 10,000 French men because of that. Get a cheap advisor right there. Actually, what about this person here? Level 2, uh, she's pretty expensive, but diplomatic reputation is quite nice. England is going to be 100% sieged here in a second now that they've done that silly thing. Okay, like the, like the war is over at this point. What we can do is we can just sort of steal their money and loot their land and stuff. I'm going to grab our navy. I'm going to hold control and box select this entire area, and that's going to grab all of our ships. Move them over to here. I'm also going to mothball our forts because we just don't need them anymore. I'm going to check the rebellion. It says we have rebellion soon. I'm going to check that. Okay, these guys are going to pop up in Limerick. And after that, that's it. Okay, let's check out the uh, let's check out the peace deal. Potential peace deal. Geneva, I think, is going to be fine now. They're at plus thirty. Opinion of us. If we were to take this hypothetically, um, Leinster and and some of these guys over here would be upset and stuff. Burgundy, there's nothing we can do about Burgundy. Switzerland would still be upset with us, which is odd. Although I think in a few days they wouldn't be so upset with us. I'm going to wait till December. Because I think if we do, the aggressive expansion should burn off just enough between December and January. Okay. The truth is, though, we can just attack these two nations. So their opinion of us is, is kind of irrelevant. I'm not even saying we want to take this. Because these aren't even forted provinces. Calais is an easy one for us to just keep snagging over and over again. And I kind of want to see if we can we, t we can take their forts, their fortifications, and maybe create a little bit of a connection there. Is that a connection? That looks like a connection, right? I 
And technically, we could do something like this. Well, and we could take Calais. The only fort they'd have left would be London. We could easily just dogpile on them and take London. It'd be kind of nice to take Ulster, but let's let's see. Can we get away with this? By golly, I think we can. England would have a giant truce with us. Kildar would have a giant truce with us. Brittany has a separate truce with us. These other guys are in the war. They have a separate truce with us. Or they'll have a truce with us. Non-separate. Awfully, Leinster, we can attack them immediately. It'll be Sligo and Burgundy will be the only two people that are threatening to join a coalition that are valid. I think that's what we do right there, to be honest. Oh, we wanted them to break their alliance with Brittany. We want them to break their alliance with Brittany. And we probably want to take as much money as we can here. I forgot about taking the alliance with Brittany. We could deselect Ulster. Like, does it matter? Does that matter? Because I think I want money more. I think I want the money more. There we go, guys. But you can make whatever peace deal you want. So what this is doing is is we're taking a chain of land from one fort to another fort, so we'll have control over all of their fortifications in England outside of London. We're taking Calais because it's another fort as well. To be fair, the war was actually for this land down here, but we're kind of doing some unjustified grabbing. That's going to cost us some diplomatic points. That's okay. It's going to cause extra aggressive expansion because it wasn't justified. Again, that's fine because strategically this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. We're taking a bunch of money. That'll help us actually embrace the Renaissance by giving us the money to do so because it'll cost us 800 ducats to do that, we determined. They're breaking their alliance with Brittany so that when we attack Brittany, Brittany won't have the protection of England. We need to core our land. We just finished a war. So we need to core these bits. It's not letting us core these ones because they're inland. We'll have to core these ones adjacent and then core these ones. So we can core these ones in a bit. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's a little bit uh, goofy looking, admittedly, but uh, hey, you know, we've destabilized. England is literally not a threat anymore. Not a threat. We don't want to get Defender of the Faith. We're saving our money for the institution. Which, if we go to our technology and check, what is the progress on that? Oh, we need a thousand ducats for this. Holy cow, we need a thousand ducats for this. We're close to a thousand. We need to take a loan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one loan. We go to the economy tab. We hit here, take a loan. It's 270 ducats. And we'll have to pay a 4% a four interest on that. And that's going to basically create a certain amount of interest income. We're going to lose some money per month. But we need to do this. We need to take this, uh, get this institution embraced. Embrace. That gives us technologies, cheaper technologies. We can now pay to get this at nice minus 15%. How beautiful is that? In fact, I think we can do two in a row here. Super cheap technologies. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go. So now we're actually highest with our diplomatic tech, which is funny. We can get this one as well. We could probably wait for this to go to six. I'm not going to wait because I want those workshops. Oh, no, we can't wait for it because we're ahead of time. So we're going to need to get military tech. But we've been working on the military idea group, so it's totally fine. So we didn't pay any technology penalties on any of those. That was crisp. Crisp. We're ahead of time on two of our technologies. A little behind on military, but that's okay because we've been dumping tons, thousands of points into offensive ideas. So we're going to catch up on that eventually. A decision has popped up. This thing here says national decision available. We can click on that. And you can see the decisions are right next to missions, decisions and policies. This has popped up. Pass the uh, something or other. Ministry of Tech 6. This will increase national tax monitor by 2%. Missionary strength by 0.5%. Doesn't seem to be any negative effect to this. Great. So once we got to admin tech 6, we could hit that one. What is this? Oh yeah, that was a decision that we had uh, long ago that we decided not to do. So we unchecked it. This is good. We do have a loan, and we're going to slowly be paying that off. We have a fort maintenance issue. We're just losing money in general. We're going to be losing money here. 
but hopefully now that we're in peacetime, we can transition and start making money while at peace. We'll have to see how things update as we move out of out of the wartime economy. There is some um, war exhaustion here. We are going to want to work on Armagnac soon. We need to get them up to... Oh, we need a royal marriage to them, actually. And we need to start annexing them. Has that penalty, that, that penalty worn off? It has not. But it should be warning off in a, like a year, right? One year. One year and this, this diplomatic reputation penalty will wear off. And, and we won't even gain that penalty because we have an agenda to integrate Armagnac. We won't even gain that penalty when we integrate them, which is really good. So we can integrate them and Foi, like boom, boom, like back to back. Actually, it's Foi that we're trying to butter up. Armagnac already loves us. Armagnac's ready to go here. We just need a diplomat to send. If I send this to Armagnac, how... how It'll be two per month until that penalty wears off, right? Because we have that huge penalty. So the amount of diplomatic reputation you have, actually, we can read this and, and get a breakdown. This says here that the progress is two per month. The base is two. Same religion is plus one. Same culture group is plus one, so that's four. But our diplomatic rep reputation is negative, so that's minus two. If we didn't have that minus three diplomatic reputation, our diplomatic reputation would be plus one, total the net would be a plus one so it'd be going at five per month rather than two per month so it'd be going much faster at this it's estimating it'll take about 10 years but we know that penalty is going to wear off soon and that should only take about five years that'll go very very fast we do also want to get a diplomat we want to get a diplomat ready there's a couple of things we need to do we want to attack these irish nations before they join a coalition against us Do these guys even have any troops? Uh, essentially, no. Is there anything we need to do at peacetime? Seize land. Well, we could wait a little bit to seize land. Well, I don't know. Hmm. We'll wait a little bit to seize the land first. I just don't want these guys joining a coalition against us. Is the problem. We need to keep an eye out and see if they start joining up. England is no longer even a valid rival for France. Holy cow. Who can we rival now? We can rival Austria. Austria already hates us. Let's rival Austria. So we're rivaled by the Ottomans, Burgundy, and Austria. Now, Burgundy and Austria were at war with each other, were they not? And they're winning. Austria, what the heck? Get over there and start beating up on... Bur Burgundy is too powerful. Burgundy is too powerful. We need to get ready to attack Burgundy at some point. Do they still have the weak air? No, now they have a strong air. Marie! Hmm. Burgundian succession crisis minus 100%. How are they getting these airs? They have like a minus 200% chance to get an air. And they're getting one anyways. Like, dang. Good for Burgundy. Usually they're supposed to have... There's still... I guess there's some kind of succession crisis going on over there. Okay, time to attack. They've joined a coalition against us. Time to attack. Before anyone else can join. So they recognized that it was a possible thing that they could do. We just had to attack. We had to go in and attack then and there. We were already planning on attacking these guys. Let's get 12,000 more troops over here to help out. That was a little bit sudden, but we just saw the message pop up that they joined the coalition against us. If they join, that means that other people join. We're incredibly lucky that Burgundy didn't join first. 
However, Burgundy probably can't join because they were at war. So them being at war is why they actually weren't able to join. But o o Olafi, um, Olafi kind of recognized that Burgundy could join and, and kind of felt emboldened to try to try to uh, to get it get the coalition going there. Now these guys have a truce against us, so they can't they can't form it anymore. It's no longer valid. Would Scotland even defend them? Yeah, Scotland would. A little uh, peasant rebellion down there. That's fine. Let's uh, go all the way down here. I'm going to uh, mothball our forts, though. We're actually making money as is. However, I don't want to mothball these forts. Actually, that one we can mothball... Not Northumbria's fort. Don't mothball this one. Why is this just dash? Maximum gear since 2000. Oh, when we mothballed it, it went to zero. It was turned off. Okay. I thought if you mothball while well, paused, it didn't do that, but I guess it does. Castile wants a royal marriage. Good. We're going to need to go around and get royal marriages with all of our peeps here. Gives us higher chances of getting heirs and things. It's all good. Makes our subjects happy. I forgot. We have a uh, we have an extra we have two extra relationship slots. We integrated um, Orleans. We had the French idea here for French language in all courts. So we can actually get some alliances if we wanted to. Muscovy's looking pretty big and scary. I'm just wondering, would Poland be a good ally? Or is Muscovy going to be hammering on Poland too many times? Would Denmark be a decent ally? Austria would be kind of a nice ally, but we've rivaled them. Castile really is kind of all we need. But we could try to get an alliance with someone that's... You know, honestly, Venice would even be kind of interesting. Milan and Venice are both stronger than they look. Gallery is actually doing quite well. Milan might actually kind of help us out here. They won't ally us while we're at war. Let's let's butter up Venice a little bit. We need to get a claim on some of these Irish nations, although. Actually, we need to be building a spy network against England and getting more claims against England. I'm going to turn this fort on in case there's a rebellion in Calais. I forgot that we took Calais, to be honest. We can't even get to Calais because Burgundy is never going to let us through. Okay, it is warning us that there could be rebellion. Yeah, I just, I literally just saw that. Um... Let's head over here quickly before they actually hold. Okay, too late. We sent the 4,000 in to distract. That rebellion is taken care of. The next one is 50%. That's going to be up here. Not too worried about it. We need our transports. Okay. Come up here so that people can start shuffling around as rebellions occur. These guys are going to take care of the rebellion in England because that will occur. That will happen. We're doing our cores here. Oh, oh, wait a second, guys. We can build uh, We can build workshops now. We got that idea group. We got the administrative idea group. Let's go here. Let's grab the high income thing. That'll make buildings cheaper. Now we have a mission to build buildings. We have five churches, but we need workshops. Let's build some workshops. Oh, we don't have that much money. That's fine. It'll come up. Should be able to build two right now. Holy cow, look at this workshop in Paris. 0.5 ducats a month. It will literally take barely like 10 years to pay off. Or wait, like 20 years? Something like that. It'll take 20 years to pay off this workshop. Less than that. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a huge workshop in Paris. Lyonnais well, e is down here. We have a fort down there. But that's the last build slot here. Yeah, we're really going to want to develop this up to 20 so we can have more build slots. We might even want to get rid of this fort eventually, but right now it's an important fort. 
So that's our money there. We need to build five of those for the next mission, or build buildings mission, which gives us plus 10 yearly tax income and 50 administrative power for free, which is nice. In order to con finish conquering Provence, we need to take this province from Brittany. Uh, we have subjugate Brittany mission, so we need to do that. If, actually, if we could just subjugate them in a single war, that would be quite good, but I'm sure it'd be very costly. Because they're such a big country at this point. We have a new heir to the throne, Louis. Um, just Louis, two, two, or Louis, or whatever it is. Oh, Louis. Uh, I think is how we'd say that. If, is French. Um, two, two, five. Two, two, five. One hundred. Very strong claim. Two, two, five is not bad. Good military skill, but other than that, uh, an average, an average heir, right? An average of three, three, three. So, nothing I'm too impressed about there. We're just trying to siege this out. Well, let's actually, let's take our, our light ships. Are those all of our light ships? Let's get them a good admiral and have them protect trade in Bordeaux like they were doing. Let's have these guys come and... Well, the transports can do whatever they want. Let's get the heavy ships over here to blockade in Desmond. Guys, we have a loan that we need to pay off, but we're making money, so we'll just be able to pay that off as we, as we accumulate money. In fact, actually, I wonder if these guys would give us some money. How angry are these guys going to be when we ask for uh, their land? Now, they are kind of out in the middle of nowhere over here, so I don't know if their opinion is going to... I don't know if many people in Europe are going to care about this, but let's see. 33. Switzerland. Burgundy. A bunch of people that are either not going to exist or have truces with us or something. Or they're allied to England and have a truce with England now. Switzerland. Why does Switzerland care so much? Guys, thanks everybody for being here. Actually, Switzerland is very close to, uh, to not minding. We just waited like a month or two, they wouldn't mind. Still try to get that overextension down. Calais has been cored. It was cored quickly because it's a slightly accepted culture. So it cores a little bit faster than the other ones got cored. I don't think Switzerland's going to mine now. There we go. The only person that is Sligo and Burgundy. That's it. Everybody else will have a truce with us. We could take their money for what it's worth. It's not much, but it's something. Let's start coring those bits of provinces. We have 47% overextension, not near the 100. That's the 100's the bad uh, problematic amount. But there we go, guys. We've taken we've completely destabilized England. England's final fort is their capital in London. Next war against England would literally be just lining up the troops and just rushing in and just defeating their army and taking London. And we have complete naval dominance over there because we sunk their entire navy in the last war. So England is completely destabilized. Again, France is very powerful. England is also very powerful in the hands of a player, but unfortunately, the AI struggles a bit. Um, and this is why France is a great beginner nation, because we haven't done anything exceptional. This is just kind of using France's power and, and just... Uh, using their historical benefits and position in the world to, to do well. Guys, thanks everybody for watching this series. I really appreciate it. If you guys have questions, uh, please post in the comments. If you guys have ideas as to who else we need to make beginner tutorials for, let me know. I want to do a DLC tutorial as well. Of course, the Leviathan DLC just came out. So that would be all DLCs included. Maybe you got the subscription for EU4, so you have all the DLCs and you don't know what the heck is going on. The game is far more complicated if you have all the DLCs. It's far more complicated, which is why it's great to learn the game without the DLCs and then just layer those on. Um, tons more mechanical systems and stuff that have to be considered and, and leveraged with the, with the DLCs. But it would be good for the people that have or maybe picked up a bunch of recommended DLCs or picked up the subscription service or whatever. Um, it would be good to have a uh, up-to-date tutorial for those people as well. Of course, we do have tutorials for Portugal, Muscovy, France, Castile, Ottomans, 
England, actually, as well on the channel. And those are with DLC and without DLC, combinations of DLC and stuff like that. So, um, But thanks, everybody, for being here. I think this was a successful demonstration of, of France and how to play the game. And, of course, everything we've done is France can be applied with other countries. It's just that we were leveraging France's power, right? If we did it with Portugal, we might not have expanded that much that quickly and done that many aggressive wars, but Portugal has other strengths, right? So it would have just, um, we would have just played it differently from the position we were in, but we made smart decisions. We learned about a lot of the systems in the game and um, thanks everybody for being with us. I'll see you guys in the next series. Have a good one, everybody.